congratulations. I talked to David Schweikert yesterday, congratulated him as well for not going to blows within the last 48 hours with any of your colleagues. So congratulations. Good job. We're proud of you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of devolved in, in Congress, hasn't it? It, has, it does resemble like grade school or uh, middle school uh, fights going on. Yes. So it, it, Congress is an interesting place, and so <laughs> it, it gets a little frustrating. But no, I, I, I don't do any of that stuff. Okay, well, all right. We're pr well, we're proud of you for not. But, I mean, I think it's a little interesting. I mean, I mean historically, the House of Representatives supposed to be the rabble-rousers, kind of, you know, the ones that, uh, that cause the, you know, storms, and then the Senate goes, hold on, we're the brakes of the system here. But apparently in the Senate side, they want to jump up and uh, throw blows, too. So I'm all about it. I say bring back, like, Parliament style and everybody yelling at each other and hollering just for funsies, maybe for a couple of months, you know, maybe shake it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is kind of entertaining. The British Parliament is kind of entertaining. And so we do that, but not a, to the extent. And by the way, Mark Wayne Mullen, who's the senator that uh, wanted to take on the union uh, guy, he, he actually served in the House. So, you know, he just, he just went recently over to the Senate. Yes. And so he went from mixed martial arts to the House to the Senate. He's, uh, yeah, he's working his way up to fight night on Wednesday at the White House. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Let's talk about you, by the way, not running again. Sup with that. It's like once we get some sort of like normalcy in Arizona politics, you got to run away on us. What's happening? Why aren't you running again? You know, the primary reason is is actually that I want to spend more time with my family. I know that everybody says that, yeah. but I really mean it. It's really difficult. This job is difficult. Most people don't realize it. We're away about three weeks out of every month in Washington, D.C., usually fly back and forth every weekend. I try to fit in seeing my 94-year-old mother, my, my husband, my three kids, and my five grandkids every weekend, and it just gets old. You know, I miss I miss my family, and I want to be uh, in Arizona more. But I have 13 more months. I have 13 more months. I'm going to serve out the rest of my term. So I'll be helping my constituents um, throughout my rest of my term. Okay. I don't want to hear, though, because I, I have seen the D.C. lifestyle. I have seen the representative lifestyle. I've seen the Senate lifestyle. And I and I understand, and I and I echo what you said. It, it is a grind and a half. It, it really, really is truly a grind. Um, but don't tell me you're just going to go tend to garden and, you know, just to take up a hobby afterwards. What are you going to do? Come on. you got to help us out a little bit. I think realistically what I'm going to do is at the end of my term, I'll probably just do nothing for a couple months. Then I'll probably be bored to death. Yep. And then I'll, you know, think of something else to do, whether that's running for another office in Arizona or whether that's working for a, um, you know, some type of think tank or whatever it may be. I don't know yet, sure. uh, but I'm guessing that I'm going to be bored because I'm so used to working all the time. Right. OK, good. Well, that's good to know. We, we'd love to have you as part of the show. I, I, I sincerely would, because the best politician you could possibly have on any of these shows is a former politician. So we would uh, we, we would love to have you on um, as we move forward. But let's get to this. I know uh, the southern border is something that's very near and dear to your heart. And I think you and Biggs have done a, a a heck of a job at championing what's going on at the southern border. Um, I think I heard yesterday under Trump we dealt with nine apprehensions on the terror watch list uh, under his um, his watch, and we are so far up over 200 terrorists on the terror watch list uh, that, excuse me, members of the terror watch list, as if it's a club, uh, so far in the Biden uh, regime. What's happening down there? Well, it's a total mess, as, as the whole nation knows. I mean, Biden's policies and the Democrats' part policies are open border policies. And so everybody from the entire world, including our adversarial countries, are coming in through the southern border because they know that it's easy. And if you just look at it, just this last fiscal year of 2023, Two and a half. There were two and a half million border crossings uh, in the southern border, and that doesn't even include the known gotaways, meaning the people that were caught on camera or sensors that they didn't catch. And so, two and a half million people. That 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 is like the population of Chicago, Illinois. Mm that came over in the last year, and we don't even know where they are. I mean, they don't track them. Uh, they don't. We, 
we don't know where these people are. And as you said, there are people just in the last fiscal year, it was 169 people on the terrorist watch list wow. that they caught and another 12 in October of 2023. And so those are just the ones they caught. Just think how many more there are because they're not uh, catching them. And, you know, it was totally different under President Trump. Under President Trump, in October of 2020, under President Trump, there were 72,000 border crossings. You know, that that's a lot. But compare it to... October 2023, this year under Biden, 241,000 border mm. crossings. Yeah. So there's no comparison, and it's because of Trump's policies, and that's why Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives have passed a bill called H.R. 2, which puts into law all of the policies that Trump had, like remain in Mexico, uh, increasing the standard to claim asylum, things like that. And and that's what we need to do. And I'm looking forward to to trying to leverage um, the border security in order to for the Senate and Biden to get something else. So they want Ukraine funding, right? And right. so our new speaker, Mike Johnson, Mike Johnson is saying, okay, President Biden and Democrat Senate, you want Ukraine funding? All right. Well, then we're going to attach our bill, H.R. 2, to it, which will secure the border because we should secure our border if we're going to help another country. I think that makes sense. I think the American people would be on our side. I think the American people will also be on your side. And keep in mind, uh, bipartisan usually means there's one or two people from the other side that came along uh, for some deal that they're going to get. But the majority charged with criminal allegations and the Department of Justice is already looking into it and so i kind of like people being able to go through court and then if they're found guilty then then we expel them right oh yes and, good but um so that's normally how i think but if these all these allegations are true and our ethics committee believes they are i mean he should he does not belong in congress no I, well, that's why we gave him to the democrats is there a way we can trade him to the dems at all is there is there any players you want from the other side you might be able to get for him because I mean he he seems to fit right into uh, the the, uh, the Biden crime family lifestyle. So uh, maybe maybe they'll take him. Maybe we yeah, can get but, somebody good. Well, the problem with that <laughs> is we can't afford for them the Democrats to have one more member because yeah. well, then we'd have less of a majority, right? We can't. It's hard to pass any Republican good conservative Republican bills now, and because uh, we only have like a three margin uh, majority right now, and so it's it's very difficult to pass good bills. But we were able to pass that border security bill, and now it's sitting in the Senate, and the Senate isn't doing anything about it. And we also passed the funding for Israel out of the U.S. House of Representatives and paid for it by cutting all those IRS agents that Pelosi put in, and the Senate isn't doing anything about that either. So, you know. We're, we're doing our job in the House. Congresswoman, thank you so much for spending a little time with us today. We appreciate all your efforts there, and uh, we'd love to uh, speak with you a couple more times while you finish out, and then hopefully afterwards as well. I would love it, and thank you so much for having me. More coming up right here on the Mike Russell Show. Hang